What's up guys, I'm back with my fourth ultra short throw projector review. I started off entry level with the Xiaomi 1080p Projo, which was something like $1,500. The Vava was next, costing $2,800, and most recently the Optoma, which is now $3,800. Each one got more expensive, but subsequently got better picture quality wise. That brings us to the LG HU85, which is the most expensive, costing $6,000 at the time of this video. But is it worth the asking price? Well, let's get it unboxed and find out. Inside we get some documentation, the power cord, and the remote control. Taking a closer look, the HU85 has a built-in 10 watt stereo soundbar. There are air vents on both the left and right sides, and for those wondering, you can mount this on a ceiling. You'll find four M6 threaded inserts on the bottom, and there's also four adjustable feet that you can use to level the projector. Around back are two HDMI 2.0 inputs with support for ARC on HDMI 1. There's two USB 2.0 ins and a single USB-C input. There's an optical digital out, a LAN connection, and there's even a digital TV tuner built in. Up top you'll find the lens, and under the flip-up door is a manual focus ring. Quality-wise, it's got an all-plastic build, and it only comes in white. It's somewhat heavy, weighing 26.9 pounds. It measures 26.8 inches wide, by 5 inches high, by 13.7 inches deep. So it's a pretty sizable projector. Now this uses the Texas Instruments 0.66 DLP chip with a native resolution of 2716 by 1528. By using XPR processing and doubling that resolution, you'll end up with 8.3 million pixels on screen at once. So no, it isn't a native 4K projector, but I guess it's a true 4K projector since it can address all 8.3 million pixels at one time. Like all the other UST projectors that have been coming out this year, it also uses a laser light source that'll have a lifespan of up to 20,000 hours. One major difference from the other ultra short throw projectors out there is that the LG doesn't use a color wheel. Instead, it uses dual lasers, a red one and a blue one. This should eliminate any rainbow effect that you would normally get from a color wheel. It's also one of the smartest, if not the smartest ultra short throw projector since it uses LG's WebOS operating system. If you've ever used an LG television, then the experience should be very familiar. For setup, I'll be using a 92 inch daylight screen with a gain of 0.9. The lower gain will help to enhance black levels since Dell P projectors don't have the best blacks. In order to get a 92 inch screen size, the LG only has to be 6 inches from the screen. This is the shortest distance of any ultra short throws that I've had in here for review, so I didn't have to rearrange my living room to accommodate this. Alright, let's power it up and run through the settings. At the start, we'll have to pick our language and location. Voice guidance is turned on by default, so you might want to turn that off. Be sure you select home, otherwise you'll be stuck in the store demo mode. Now select wired or wireless to connect to the internet. Once you're connected, you'll have to agree to all the terms and conditions. This is the HDMI control setup if you've got other devices hooked up to it, but I'm going to skip this part for now. This is going to be the TV setup if you're using it with an antenna or a cable box. I'm not, so I'm going to skip this too. And that's it for the initial setup. It's going to kick us into the TV channel, so we'll have to just go back out of this and go into the home dashboard. You can get there by tapping the home button on the remote. This section is going to show you devices on your network and your inputs and any smart devices that you've got paired with it. You can also reorder or rename any of the sources here too. Okay, so if you tap on the home button again, it'll bring up all your apps on the bottom row. If you're coming from an LG TV, this is all going to look very familiar. This does have the magic remote, so you'll have that little mouse pointer to navigate with.
If you're going to browse the internet, the little pointer is going to come in real handy. And yes, you can play videos from the browser. If you've got a USB stick plugged into it, you can play back photos, music, and videos too. Now, if you want to download other apps, you can do that here in the LG Content Store. I tried searching for Voodoo and for Disney Plus, but they aren't available here. There's actually not that many good apps in the store, so you might want to keep an Apple TV or a Roku or another streaming device handy. All right, let's check out some settings now. If you couldn't tell, this is the Lion King on Apple TV. To get to the settings, you'll have to tap on the settings button on the remote, and it'll bring up the quick settings bar. Here we've got some picture presets, which are adjustable. There's Cinema Home, Cinema, Game, Vivid, and Standard. I'm gonna keep it on Cinema though. Here's a few aspect ratio options. We've got some sound settings. You've got HDMI ARC, Bluetooth, the built-in speaker, and the optical out. Next is the sleep timer, which goes up to four hours. And there's a projection mode. If you want to mount this on the ceiling, then you can absolutely do that. Okay, let's get into the main settings menu. Here we have the picture options. For energy savings, you want to keep it on minimum, otherwise the image is going to be real dim to save power. For picture test, it's just going to show you a picture. Select yes if you can see it. And if you want to get HDR, you got to be sure this is turned on. Instant game response is basically a game mode. This isn't the best projector for gaming, but neither were any of the other ultra short throws that I've checked out. It's good for casual gaming, but not for the hardcore guys. Okay, here you've got basic picture settings. The color temperature, which I'm going to keep on warm. And under Expert, you've got Dynamic Contrast, which can either blow out whites or crush blacks if you've got it set up too high. There's also Dynamic Tone Mapping, which we'll come back and check out later. Super Resolution, I'm going to keep this off. Color Gamut, which I'm going to keep on Auto. And then you've got the White Balance and Color Management settings. Unless you've got proper measurement tools, I wouldn't go messing with any of these settings. I'm not a professional TV reviewer or calibrator, so I'm going to leave these alone. Now if you listen to Tom Cruise, you may want to keep all these picture settings off. If you want to get better motion, you can always tweak these settings here. Or if you just like the soap opera effect, then true motion is where it's at. For sports, I like to adjust these settings, like if I'm watching basketball or MMA, sometimes that extra smooth motion can really help out.
All right, we've got the sound output settings again. I've got this hooked up to a receiver, but if you want to use the built-in soundbar, I'm not sure if you can tell, but it's not exactly all that good. It's light sounding and doesn't have much impact. It'll be fine for a temporary fix, but I'd advise getting a better sound solution. Here we have the channel settings again and the connection settings. If you want to be able to use HDMI control so your audio system turns on with the LG remote or to control other compatible devices, make sure you have HDMI CEC turned on. Under general, we've gone through most of these settings already, but this is where you'll find the digital keystoning. If for some reason you can't get the image perfectly lined up, this does have a 12 point adjustment. Just pick your point and you can move the image around. Obviously it's best to avoid using this at all costs since you'll be digitally moving the picture around and cutting away at any unused pixels. You want to use all those 8 million pixels for the best image. The rest of these settings we've already went over or they're pretty self explanatory. So just pause the video if you need to see something. All right, this is one of my favorite scenes to see how tone mapping works on these projectors. You want to be able to see the details in the bright highlighted areas here, and also in the darker areas here. I've got this on the cinema preset, which I think looked the best for my screen. Now if we check out some of the other presets, you can see how it handles the image. Vivid doesn't look too horrible, but you're clipping detail here and here, so it's kind of overblown. Standard is just bad looking. Cinema Home is only a little better. Regular Cinema I think is the best, and Game Mode does clip a tiny bit up top. I left the contrast, brightness, color, and tint sliders at their default, but I did turn the sharpness all the way down. Now this does have dynamic tone mapping which will adjust the projector's intensity based on a particular frame. So it'll help to preserve those peak highlights and black level detail. If I turn it off, the image does get considerably brighter, but all the detail on the flames are almost gone. If we turn it back on, it looks great, but it will dim down the projector. I do find with brighter movies that dynamic tone mapping works great, but for darker movies, I find keeping it off looks a little better. This clip is from The Force Awakens. Now you tell me which one you prefer.
In the side by side, I find that there's more details in the shadow areas with the dynamic tone mapping turned off. If you're anything like me, you'll probably be playing around with this setting a lot while watching movies. As for color, like I mentioned before, I'm not a professional calibrator, so I didn't mess around with any of the advanced color management settings. I only tweaked the cinema preset, and to my eyes, this throws out an incredibly bright and vivid image. Depending on your screen material, you could get an even brighter image than I have here. And yes, if you only have a wall, you can project it on there too. But a screen will give you the best performance. As for sharpness uniformity, I found this to be the best of the bunch so far. Now, unlike the other projectors, you will have to manually adjust the focus. The other projectors were done electronically, but this one has a manual dial on the top. I know it might seem like LG cheaped out by going the manual route, but if you want to get focus perfectly dialed in, you're going to have to get your eyes right up on the screen, so the dial is within arm's reach. As with all the other ultra short throws that I've reviewed, the center of the screen has always been the sharpest. The outer corners have always been softer, and this one is no exception. I found the best way to get this in focus is to get the upper corners as sharp as possible. It's never going to be perfectly sharp, so you'll just have to get it as close as you can. The center and the bottom of the screen will be slightly soft if you're pixel peeping, but at normal viewing distances you're not going to notice it. But as I mentioned, this projector is the sharpest of the bunch. Details are very crisp and much better looking than many of those 1080p upscaling projectors. It's not as clean as a native 4K Pro Joe, especially around the edges, but still, this is the best I've seen so far from an ultra short throw. Now what makes these ultra short throw projectors so appealing is that they're bright enough to use with the lights turned on. And if you have it paired with an ambient light rejecting screen made for USTs, you can have an image that looks just as good as any LED television set. Why go with a tiny 75 inch when you can have a 120 inch? This is the Vivid Storm electric floor rising screen. I'll have a review for this in the coming days, so be sure you're subscribed. So final thoughts, let's get the not so great stuff out of the way. It's $6,000 and that's really expensive. The built-in soundbar isn't all that great, but it's not really all about the soundbar, it's about the image quality. The thing is white. I mean, even in a completely dark room, I can see this right in front of me. Why have a huge immersive image only to be distracted by the white casing? Well, CES is right around the corner, so maybe they'll come out with a black version. We did bring this up with their engineers if you remember that video. Why is projector white? Is there a black option? Um, right now, we don't have black option, but we're thinking about it because uh, after we're getting a lot of questions, like, uh, do you guys have black version? But right now, we have only white version, so maybe later. Maybe later. pretty soon. And there's one deal-breaking issue that I had with this, and this isn't just a bad sample either. I actually have two of these on hand. No matter how loud you have the volume turned up, for me at least, I can hear this obnoxiously loud whining or buzzing sound coming from the left side of the projector. I read that it's coil whine or something, but for me, I find it so distracting it kind of makes it uncomfortable to sit and watch for long periods. The Vava projector has the same issue, but it's only about half as loud as the LG. The Vava just had a crazy loud fan. The Optoma that I just reviewed didn't have any of this noise. It sounded a lot more like my Sony projector that I have in my theater, which is to say it's very quiet. I suppose depending on how good your hearing is, you might not be bothered by this at all. I kept thinking that dogs must hear this same high-pitched sound when you blow those dog whistles. Also, if you're sensitive to the rainbow effect, you're going to see it here too. I saw less on this than the other projectors, but I still saw it nonetheless. Also, for those wondering, there are no consumer projectors with Dolby Vision at this point in time. But as far as pure image quality, this is my favorite ultra short throw of the bunch. It's a bit sharper than the Optoma and the Vava, and it's brighter than those two as well. If you've got it paired up with an ambient light rejecting screen, this might make you think twice about purchasing a television in the future. Now if you want to check out this projector in person and you're in the New York or Connecticut area, then do yourself a favor and visit our friends at Value Electronics for a personal demo. Just let them know that we sent you. So let me know your thoughts on the LG. Are you in the market for an ultra short throw? And if so, what's on the top of your list? Leave us a comment down below. Again, you can find links for everything I've mentioned in this video if you want to pick something up or to get some more specs. Thanks for watching. 
Be sure to like if you found the video useful. And if you're not a subscriber, then be sure to tap the subscribe button. And we'll see you guys again in the next one.